الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا من من دعي لله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I welcome all the viewers on the Peace TV network that is the Peace TV English, the Peace TV Urdu, the Peace TV Bangla as well as the Peace TV Chinese as well as the people watching us on the various social media platforms that is YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Almighty God be upon all of you. Inshallah, we will be starting with Season 3, Session 1. Inshallah, I will answer to the questions that you have posed in the limited time that we have. So let's take the first question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Maryam. I am from Vancouver, Canada. I work as a general manager in a private firm here. I was a Hindu. I have recently reverted to Islam a year ago. I would like to thank Allah to guide me to the right path and choose me to become a Muslim. My question is, are there levels, as there are levels in Jannah as well as in Jahannam, is it possible for a person like me to reach Jannatul Firdaus as it is the highest level in Jannah a person can attain. The people who do Dawah are much more superior in deeds than me. Is it possible for a normal practicing Muslim like me to attain Jannatul Firdaus? Dawah is compulsory upon every single Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Nahl chapter number 16 verse number 125 Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal maw'idati al hasana wajadilhum billati hi ahsan Invite to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preachings and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious We should do da'wah with hikmah, with wisdom And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Asr Chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3. Wal asr, by time. Inna al insana lafi khusr. Verily, man is in a state of loss. Illa ladina amanu, except for those who believe. Wa amilu salihat, and do righteous deeds. Wa tawasaw bil haq, exhort people towards truth that is doing dawah. Wa tawasaw bil sabr, exhort people towards patience and perseverance. To enter Jannah, there are minimum four criteria. Iman, that is belief. Second is Amal al-Salihat, that is righteous deeds. The third is exhorting people towards truth, that is doing Dawah. And the fourth is exhorting people towards patience and perseverance. These are four criteria for a person to enter Jannah. If any of them is missing under normal circumstances, a person will not enter Jannah. If Allah wants to forgive you, it is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every Muslim, he should at least be a part-time die. And those people who are full-time dies, those people who have dedicated their lives for the cause of Islam, for the sake of conveying the message of Islam, they are the best of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ali, Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 104. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةُ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Let there arise out of you a band of people calling towards what is good, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. They are the ones to attain felicity. Today in our community, we have full-time doctors, full-time engineers. How many full-time da'is do we have? So the best people are those who dedicate their lives to spread the message of Islam. So minimum you need to be a part-time dai. And if you are doing little dawah, then you should try to do 
as many good deeds as possible. You should try to compensate it with other good deeds. And whenever we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah, we should ask for Jannatul Firdaus. So we should focus on doing Dawah and we should focus on doing righteous deeds. We should try to do all the things that are fard in Islam. All the faraiz should be done. We should not miss a single faraiz, a single fard act. We should abstain from all the things that are haram. We should try to do as many sunnah acts, as many things that are mustahab. We should try to abstain from things that are makruh and also abstain totally from things that are haram. If we focus on this, there are high chances by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will enter Jannatul Firdaus. Besides this, you should focus on the Sunnah Acts. The Farai should be done. After that, you should focus on the Sunnah Acts. For example, offering the Sunnah al muakkada Offering the Witr prayer, which is very important. Also offering the two rakah before the Fajr prayer. As our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that anyone who offers two rakah of sunnah of fajr prayer, it is better than the world and the wealth in it. Besides this, we should also focus on the voluntary fast. Besides the obligatory fast, we should focus on the voluntary fast. Fasting on the day of Arafah, as our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that the one who fasts on the day of Arafah it is an expiation for his previous year's sins as well as the coming year's sins. This fasting is for the people who are not performing Hajj. We should fast on the day of Ashura, fast the six days of Shawwal, fast during the Ayyamul Beev, fast on Mondays and Thursdays. The more you focus on righteous deeds, the more chances that you will enter Jannatul Firdaus. And if you know that there is one person who will enter Jannah, you should have hope and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will be that one person and you should work hard towards it. If you know that there is one person who will enter hellfire, you should pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are not that one person. You should not take it for granted that I am a Muslim, I am such a good human being, I am a righteous human being, I cannot enter paradise. No Muslim uh, sorry, I cannot enter Jahannam. No Muslim can take it for granted that he will enter paradise. Each and every human being will enter Jannah with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should focus on doing good deeds, on doing righteous deeds, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, if we focus on these things, inshallah, we will enter Jannatul Firdaus by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he admit all of us in the gardens of paradise and into the highest level of paradise that is Jannatul Firdaus. The next question. Assalamu alaikum. I am from Kashmir. My question is, is it halal to earn money from YouTube by creating our own channel. Starting a YouTube channel, it is easy. Also starting a YouTube channel that is halal, it is easy. But we have to see to it that it is within the purviews of the Islamic Sharia. We should not break any rules of the Islamic Sharia. And Coming to a question regarding earning money through YouTube. Earning money through YouTube, it is very easy if your channel is popular. Earning halal money through YouTube, it is very difficult. Because you have to abstain from everything that is haram. And one of the main ways of earning money through YouTube, it is through the ads. And you have profit sharing along with YouTube. Sometimes 60% goes to YouTube, 40% to the user, sometimes 50-50, depending upon the popularity of the person and depending upon the popularity of the channel. So if you start a YouTube channel, the ads that come on that channel, it should be halal. It should not involve in anything that is haram. More than 95% of the ads on YouTube, they involve something that is haram. They will either have women without hijab 
or they have music so you should abstain from all the things that are haram and especially these two things because majority of the ads they have either women without hijab or they have music so you can very well start a youtube channel you can even earn money through youtube but you have to see to it that it is through halal means it does not involve anything that is haram and social media whether it be youtube whether it be facebook it can be used for conveying the message of islam you can reach thousands of people so you should use this social media the various social media platforms to convey the message of islam to the non-muslims to those who are unaware of it and if your niya is to start this youtube channel to serve the deen inshallah you will be rewarded the next question my name is raj what is the meaning of jihad many people they have a misconception and they think that jihad is any war fought by any Muslim, whether it be for any reason, whether it be for land, whether it be for wealth, whether it be for race. Jihad does not mean any war fought by any Muslim, whether it be for land, whether it be for wealth, whether it be for race. Jihad is derived from the Arabic word jihada, which means to strive, which means to struggle. Jihad also means to strive and struggle against one's own evil inclination. Jihad also means to strive and struggle to make the society better. Jihad also means to strive and struggle in self-defense in the battlefield. So Jihad basically means to strive to struggle. For example, if a student is striving and struggling to pass in the examination, in Arabic we would say that he is doing Jihad. Many people have a misconception that Jihad can only be done by Muslims. This misconception can easily be removed just by quoting two verses of the glorious Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14, wa was sayin al insana bi walidayhi, and we have enjoined upon man kindness to his parents. And if the parents they do jihad, strive and struggle to make you worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do not obey them. But yet live with them with love and compassion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14 and 15, that if the parents they do jihad, strive and struggle to make you worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do not obey them. Now this type of jihad is jihad fi sabili shaitan. A similar verse in the glorious Quran, in Surah an Kabul, chapter number 29, verse number 8, that if the parents they do jihad, strive and struggle to make you worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do not obey them. So here the glorious Quran is talking about non-Muslim parents doing jihad, striving and struggling to make their children worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This type of jihad is jihad fi sabili shaitan. Jihad in the part of the Satan. What we Muslims should do is jihad fi sabili Allah. Jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But normally, when the term jihad is used, it is taken for granted that it is jihad fi sabili Allah. When the term jihad is used, if it is used separately or individually, it is taken for granted that it is, it is jihad fi sabir Allah. So jihad basically means to strive to struggle. One type of jihad is qital that is fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But jihad does not basically mean a war. And if you look at the lifestyle of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The first 13 years of prophethood. There were several verses that were revealed talking about jihad. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, he never fought physically fighting. It was later on when the Prophet, peace be upon him, went to Medina. There the wars took place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah An-Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 69, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا And those who strive in our way, we shall surely open up their pathways. When this verse was revealed, there was no war, physical war that took place. And one verse of the glorious Quran is sufficient to prove that killing any innocent human being is as if you have killed the whole of humanity. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32. Man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafs, aw fasadin fil ard, faka anna ma qatala nasa jami'a, wa man ahyaha, faka anna ma ahya nasa jami'a. That if anyone kills any human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as if he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any human being, it is as if he has saved the whole of humanity. So killing any innocent human being, it is completely prohibited in Islam. And even according to Imam al-Dhahabi, he writes in his book Al-Kabair, The 70 Major Sins, wherein he lists the major sins. And he says that murder, it is the second major sin in Islam. So killing any innocent human being, it is completely prohibited in Islam. This misconception regarding the word jihad, previously it wasn't on the top of the charts. But the media, depending how the media it portrays Islam, these misconceptions arise in the minds of the non-Muslims. The next question, does a husband have right over the money his wife has earned? Can she spend it independently the way she wants? Can she give it to a brother or anyone else she wishes? In Islam, it is the duty of the man to look after the financial aspects of the family. Before marriage, it is the duty of the father and the brother and after marriage it is the duty of the husband and the son to look after the lodging, boarding, clothing and all the other financial aspects. In Islam a woman need not work but if she wishes she may work but any work that she does it should be, it should be within the purviews of the Islamic Sharia. She should not take up any job that is haram. So a woman, she can work, but all the money that she earns, she can keep it for herself. She need not spend a single money on the family. If she wishes willingly, she can give it to her relatives. But no one can force her to give it. Because it is a man in Islam who is responsible for the financial aspects of the family. The next question, Sayyid Faisal from Uttar Pradesh, India. Assalamu alaikum. Why has Allah made me a Muslim and why was I born in a Muslim family and my friends in a non Muslim family? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah di khalaqa al mauta wal hayata liya biluakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. It is Allah who has created life and death to, touch, to test which of you are good in deeds. So this life, it is a test for the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different people in different ways. And our blood Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said that every child is born in Deen al-Fitrah. That is every child is born as a Muslim. It is later on that his parents, they may make him a Hindu, a Christian, a Jew, etc. And just because a person is born in a Muslim family, he is not guaranteed paradise. A person may be a Muslim throughout his life, but a few days or just before dying, he may commit shirk and his abode will be the hellfire. Similarly, a non-Muslim, he may be a non-Muslim throughout his life, but a few days before he dies. He may understand the truth of Islam. He may accept Islam. And once he embraces Islam, he will enter paradise. So it is all subjective. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 53, سَنُورِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيْنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ Soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into their souls until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deliver the message to each and every human being. So no human being has the excuse that he did not receive the message. It is upon the non-Muslim, upon the human being to accept the message or to reject it. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different people in different ways. There are thousands of Muslims who are Muslims but they do not practice. They, may, they do not offer salah. So they are just Muslim by name. So it is all subjective. Even if a person is born in a non-Muslim family, he has the opportunity throughout his life to embrace Islam. And once he embraces Islam, he is a Muslim by choice. Many of us are Muslims by chance and we take it for granted. But many a times non-Muslims, they work hard to search for truth. And once they embrace Islam, they are much more practicing than many of the born Muslims. So it is all subjective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different people in different ways. We will take the last question. My name is Ishaq Yusuf from Nigeria. Christians say Jesus is the only salvation to eternal life. What is your comment on this? It is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. Many Christians, they misunderstand this verse and they think that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. But in fact, this verse simply means that, we, that the people at the time of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, they had to follow the commandments of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And whatever Jesus Christ, peace be upon him said, it was a revelation from Almighty God. So he was the truth and the life. That means whatever he commanded the people to do, they had to follow as it was a revelation from Almighty God. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He was only a prophet of God. And every prophet at his time, he was the truth and the life. No man cometh unto Almighty God, but through that prophet. Moses, peace be upon him, at his time, he was the truth and the life. No man cometh unto Almighty God, but through Moses, peace be upon him. David, peace be upon him, at his time, he was the truth and the life. No man cometh unto Almighty God, but through David, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the truth and the life. No man cometh unto Almighty God, but through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He is the truth and the life. That means we have to follow his teachings. We have to follow the commandments of Almighty God that were revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So this was in no way, in no way it says that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the finger of God, cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, for I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he is a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. In fact, if you read the Bible, it is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he said, Think not, I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For till the heavens and the earth shall pass, not one jot or tittle of the law or the commandments shall be broken. For if anyone breaks one of the least of the commandments and teaches men to do so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. For if anyone keeps the commandments and teaches men to do so, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He never claimed divinity. In fact, if you read, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14. In fact, if you read, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 3. This is eternal life that you may know that there is one God. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, who thou hast sent. 
Furthermore, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 16 and 17. A man approaches Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and he asks him, O oh, good master, what good things I should do that I shall attain eternal life? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies and says, Why thou call it me good? There is only one good, and that is the Father in heaven. That is Almighty God. And if you want to enter eternal life, you must keep the commandments. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never said that if you want to enter eternal life, believe that I am God. Believe that I died on the cross for the sins, but he rather said, if you want to enter eternal life, you must keep the commandments. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. In fact, if you read, it is mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by himself and you are witness to it. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. And he repeated verbatim what was said by Moses, peace be upon him. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29. And it is also, also mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 6, verse number 4. Shama Israelo, Adonai Lahad, no Adonai Chad. Hear, o Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he even prophesies about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. This verse is talking about no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He prophesies about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you are a true Christian, you have to believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And you have to believe that the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And you have to follow the commandments of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This was the time that we had today. Inshallah, my father will continue the remaining part of the session. I would like to end the session with the verse of the glorious Quran that I quote at the beginning from Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 33. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَيْ لَلَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than the one who calls others towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Works righteousness and says that I am a Muslim. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ